Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the pros and cons of buying a Synology NAS. Synology NAS is probably the top tier, it kind of shares every now and then between Synology and QNAP, it's one of the top brands in network attached storage. They have a series of 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 12 bay desktop NASs along with a whole host of rack mount devices for business. So straight first and foremost, let's talk pros. Well, first and foremost, they have, in my honest opinion, the best software platform out there. They have an incredible grasp of first party apps and uh, you know, giving applications that are more, far more user friendly than any other NAS brand out there. Their own first party uh, brand of Synology desktop applications that are both client based and familiar to those that have used Google Drive Dropbox and more are quite frankly staggering. There's Synology Office that gives you lots of Office applications, you know, work processing, um, you know, table documents, CSV, that sort of thing, an Excel spreadsheet kind of documentation there with Synology um, Office applications as well. On top of that, you've got Synology Drive, which is very much like um, the interface you find in Dropbox and Google Drive. There's kind of a one portal access point that lets you open up everything in a far easier, chewable, user-friendly manner. They've got their own Synology chat application that works a lot like Skype and other instant messaging services that lets other users that use the Synology NAS communicate. That's one of you business users. We're along with Synology Calendar and other Synology applications such as Moments that's used to catalog all of your photos. So with Synology NAS, you can feed it 10 years of photos, much like Picasa, or Facebook or stuff like that, it will ask you, it will say all of these people's faces are in it, who is this person, you give it a name, John Doe, and then that person will be tagged in that. And every single photo that's got that person in it will then be tagged so you can retrieve that photo or collections of groups of people together and make processing and accessing archives significantly easier. With this, moving forward, there's slightly more uh, enterprise level app, uh, applications, there's the surveillance station application, which is up to version 8, I believe, that is, you know, enterprise rivaling software that's included with all Synology NAS for surveillance. You can add internet protocol or IP cameras to your network and monitor a whole control deck um, of cameras with an alert system, monitoring, and all of that which is being recorded in real time, simultaneously to being accessed by all the other users as you see fit, privileges, etc., and this surveillance software can be used on both mobile and desktop. Talking of mobile, there are loads of mobile applications with Synology's NAS systems. There's a whole host of different apps for iOS and Android, which is fantastic. When moving forward from that, they've got their own virtual machine application that lets you deploy and run multiple virtual machines on your Synology NAS, along with a host of CRM and CMS based systems. Moving forward from that, there is support of lots of popular third-party applications such as Apple Time Machine and, of course, Plex Media Server, to name but a couple. There are so many more than that. Now, in terms of design, Synology, as you can see from a few of the items on the screen, have got, in the majority of them are black chassis in either plastic or metal, and the desktop ones are particularly easy on the eye. Um, the, in terms of hardware and architecture, they've got mostly uh, um, Intel-based CPUs, with the occasional ARM for the likes of Realtek or Annapurna inside. But there's lots of Intel-based CPUs ranging from Atoms all the way up to Xenon-based CPUs, depending on the devices you look at. Um, apart from that, the devices themselves, across the whole NAS industry, they have one of the best warranties out there. I'd say just shy of Buffalo's warranty coverage. Um, Synology has got loads of units with it. There's no less than two years on any unit with lots of their plus series of models arriving with three years of manufacturer's warranty and the more enterprise excess level series and rack mounts arriving with the Synology replacement service. So five years of warranty and next day advanced replacement if there's a fault with your hardware. Again, great support and coverage. And the, the brand itself has just gives you a lot of confidence in their software. That's their big, big sell. They are more interested in the software than the hardware. They want you to know that this device can either be set up and forget or perform exactly how you need it. So, what are the downsides? Well, as you may have seen them be skirting and skating around, in terms of hardware, they do have a tendency 
to use lower power CPUs than their competitors. Because their software, a lot of it is first party, they've been able to shape and craft the software as best as possible and therefore not require bigger CPUs inside. Therefore, there aren't, there's a big disparity and gap between a number of their CPUs. We've got some of the ARM, uh, so power efficient CPUs, followed up by some Intel Atom CPUs and some Celeron. Then we see a big gap and we move straight into Pentium Ds and Xeons. There's nothing there in the middle. There's no i3s, i5s, i7s, or none of your AMD Ryzen's, nothing like that in the middle. So a lot of the time you will see price tags on Synology NASs, which a number of particularly you know, PC veteran types will look at that hardware and go, that is way too expensive for the hardware you're getting. But do remember Synology trades on its software more than its hardware. Another downside. Um, Synology doesn't seem to cater as much towards 10GBE as some other Na uh, NAS devices. They do have a number of NAS solutions out there that feature 10GBE, but almost all of them are high level enterprise level units. And they have introduced PCIe slots into some of their NASs, but not all of them. And the ones that do, you have to make a choice in a number of these cases with a PCIe card that will let you have 10GBE in that slot or SSD cache with the M2D17 or M2D18 card. So you have to go real top tier, four grand and above, to get a NAS that has two PCIe slots and therefore makes you choose between removing the bottleneck of your external connection with 10GBE or removing the internal bottleneck with um, SSD cache. You can use the bays, but it's annoying. You don't really want to use your bays for SSD caching. That's what the PCIe card should have been doing. Finally, uh, Synology itself, in terms of the entire design and brand, caters less for third-party apps than the likes of QNAP. With such a great focus on first-party applications, it's unsurprising that the support of their third-party apps would wane ever so slightly. If you go towards the App Center, there are far fewer apps supporting third-party applications than QNAP and Acer Store and brands like that, who have a larger reliance on those third-party apps. So if you're buying a NAS to run your th your third party app, your own software, and use the NAS as a NAS, you know, like a, a, a network drive only without using its own software and interface, chances are you're not gonna make the most of your Synology NAS, and therefore you may find yourself overspending. But apart from that, Synology NAS as a brand is still one of the best out there. And it's definitely what something that's got, you know, it's a brand that's got something for everyone. It's just a question of what your, where your priorities are and whether you're buying this for the hardware or the software. If you're using the Synology apps, you're a software buyer. If you're going to be using your own third-party software, then it might be worth going to have a look at another brand. But otherwise, that is Synology NAS, why you should buy and why you shouldn't. Next, we'll be up QNAP, and after that, we've got Store, Buffalo, Drabo, and more. If you enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, see the other videos, click subscribe. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching.